please take your Bible this morning and go to the book of Isaiah chapter 49, please. Isaiah chapter 49 for our scripture reading this morning. Isaiah 49. <coughs> We're going to read verses 13 through 16. I'll begin on verse 13. You join me on 14, then I'll read 15, and we'll end together on verse 16 of Isaiah chapter 49. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And I'll begin on verse 13. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of the scripture here this morning, and God, I pray that you will continue to make our hearts ready to hear the truth from your word today. Lord, thank you already for the good music and uh, just the wonderful praises to thee we've been able to hear and to sing. Thank you for the good testimony this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to, to give uh, to your work and to the cause of Christ, not only here but around the world. Lord, we're asking you now that you'll speak to our hearts through your word this morning, used as special, and I pray your blessing upon it, and put our hearts in tune with your heart this, today, as only you can, and I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All of grace is my story, all the way from earth to glory. Since by grace he lifted me from sin and woe, living grace he has extended as on him my heart depended. And he'll give new grace when it's my time to go. Not yet discovered, grace, not yet uncovered, grace, from his bountiful store. Grace to cross that river, grace to face forever, there'll be new grace I've not needed before. There's been grace for every trial. There's been grace for every mile. There's been grace sufficient from his vast supply. Grace to make my heart more tender. Grace to love and pray for sinners. But he'll give new grace. When it's my time to die Grace not yet discovered Grace not yet uncovered Grace from his bountiful store Grace to cross a river Grace to face forever There'll be new grace I've not needed before. Grace to cross that river, grace to face forever. There'll be new grace I've not needed before. Father, we thank you now for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity we have to look into your word. And, Father, we do ask for some of that grace that he just sang about, that you would be gracious to us this morning and open our understanding as we look into your word and this passage in the book of Isaiah. 
<clears throat> give us help this morning. Give encouragement to your people. Help us focus our attention upon you today. Lord, I pray that you'd keep us from being distracted. Keep us from our minds wandering to other things that would cause us to miss the truth you have for us today. And I pray your word would be a help and a blessing to those who are here this morning and those listening by way of the internet. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Keep your Bible open to Isaiah 49. We're going to look at these verses in just a moment. You know, <clears throat> when our youngest son, Nathan, was five, we had gone to California. I, I believe we went out there to uh, see a Phoenix Suns, Los Angeles Lakers basketball game, and we had met up with another family who we knew in Southern California in the Los Angeles area, and we had, uh, I think they had three boys at the time, they eventually had four, but I think they had three boys, and of course we had our three children, and them and us, and uh, we had met, and we had got a, all, we had a station wagon at the time, remember the old station wagons that had the uh, seat in the back that faced backwards, huh, remember those, and uh, how many of you like riding in the seat looking backwards, huh, yeah, how many of you wouldn't do it today, yeah, <laughs> that's right, and we, uh, we had stopped at McDonald's and got something to eat, and we loaded everybody back up, and of course, you know, you're talking, I think, six kids and mom and dad, buddy, we're all loaded in the car, and, and uh, we're driving down the road, and the guys are cutting up, they had boys, we had boys, and they're all cutting up, making fun, and, and, and I said something about Nathan, and we said, where's, no, one of the boys back there said, where's Nathan? We said, oh, come on, Nathan? And nothing. We say, come on, you guys, quit playing with us. He's back there. Nathan, sit up. You know, we know you're back there hiding. No, no, he's not here. We stopped the car and looked, and sure enough, he's not there. We, we went off and forgot Nathan at McDonald's in Los Angeles, California. And he's, he's five years old. Now, now he's, let's see. He's 30, 31 now, so the statute of limitations is over, I think. We can't get arrested or anything. But, uh, so, you know, and again, you know, there's no, you didn't have cell phone to call. You, did. you just turned around and said, let's go back and see if he's still there. And uh, somebody didn't pick him up and take him. And uh, we, of course, drove back, and he was sitting there having a conversation with somebody. And uh, we were able to pick him up, put him in the car, and, and go on our way. But we, we all, we've often thought, especially at that time, we thought, you know, what must have went through his mind as a five-year-old to see us driving away in the car, and he's in a strange city where he doesn't know anybody. Now, if you knew Nathan, it was probably no big deal, but uh, he just made new friends, you know. But uh, it, 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 it had to be an awful feeling to be forgotten that somebody forgot you were there. That's what Israel felt like. God, they have been in captivity for 70 years in Babylon. And they, they really felt like they never were going to leave. And, and they felt like, when, when the prophet came and said, no, you're going to be delivered. God's going to bring you out and He's going to bring you into a new land and you're not going to hunger anymore. You're not going to thirst anymore. God's going to take care of you. You know what they said? Look in verse number 14. Zion said, The Lord hath forgotten me. My Lord hath for, or forsaken me. My Lord hath forgotten me. They said, No. You, you may say that, but I know God's forgot about us. You ever felt that way? You ever been going through tough times, go through hard, hard times, or go through what we call deep waters, and, 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 and you think, man, you know what? I think God's just forgotten about me. That's how they were feeling, uh, the, the children of Israel. But God reminds them of something. Verse 15, can a woman forget her sucking child? Can a, can, can, she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Can a, can a woman turn her back on her child? And you know, it, it's amazing. The, the last person to ever turn on a child is mom. Mom just believes to the very end. You've all, you know, you've all seen or heard the stories where the guy's convicted, he's a murderer, and he's going to the electric chair, but mom's there pleading for his life. No, no, he's my son. And that's just in the heart of a mother. 
to love her child. Now I know God says, and by the way, the obvious answer is, can she forget her, her sucking child that she should have compassion? The, the obvious answer is no, she can't do that. Not, not in a natural way. But he says, yea, they may forget. And we've seen that in recent years where mothers have killed their own children. Tragic cases. And he says, so they may forget because they're human beings and they're flesh. But God says, yet will I not forget thee. And I'm going to talk to you this morning on that subject. God will not forget you. God will not forget you. I'm not going to be long, and it won't be real deep, but I hope it will be helpful to you uh, this morning as we look at that simple thought. Number one, God will not forget you. Though you may feel like you're in captivity like Israel, God will not forget you. Though you may feel like you've been forgotten, God does not forget you. Though, though you pray and you pray and no answer seems to come, God has not forgotten you. Though you feel as if nobody cares, God has not forgotten you. Though you listen, God may chasten you, but He hasn't forgotten you. God may rebuke you, but He has not forgotten you. God may test you, but He's not forgotten you. God may discipline you, but He's not forgotten you. God may purge you and purge some things from your life, but He hasn't forgotten you. God forgets our sins, but He doesn't forget us. God forgets our failures, but He doesn't forget us. God will forget our iniquities, but He doesn't forget us. He forgets our trespasses, but He does not forget us. Moses grew up in Pharaoh's house, ends up, I, I think Moses knew that being spared as a child when all the male children were being killed, being rescued by Pharaoh's daughter, being brought up in Pharaoh's house, I believe his mother and his father, I think he was taught that there's some special plan God has for you, my son. And I believe when, when he came of age, the Bible says he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God uh, rather than to have all the treasures of Egypt. And so he made his decision, I'm going to go with the people of God. And he saw an Egyptian and Israelite having a fight one day, and you know what he did? He took the Egyptian and he killed him. Buried him in the sand. I don't know whether he thought, I'll just do it one at a time, and we'll just take care of all these guys, one by one, till, I, till we, we whip these guys. I don't know what he was thinking, but he was thinking that maybe that's what God would do until he found out that somebody saw him do what he did. And you know the story, Moses ran away. He ran away to the backside of the desert, ran away as far away as he could where nobody from Egypt could find him. And he stayed back there for 40 years. He, he out there in the backside of the desert, he met some people, fell in love with a girl, and ended up having to work for his father-in-law. That, that's really getting down the ladder, isn't it? But there he was, working for his father-in-law. His father-in-law was Jethro, not Clampett. But uh, I know what some of you were thinking. And um, he's, he's, he's working for his father-in-law, tending sheep. And by the way, I think Moses, after 40 years, just thinks, this is where I'll be. This is where I'm going to be the rest of my life. I had my opportunity, and I blew it. I messed it up. Now I'm back here. Ten years go by. Twenty years go by. Thirty years go by. What would you think? This is it for me. I'm just tend to be here. And he's out doing his job one day. And a bush is on fire. I, I'm told in that part of the world, in the desert area where the temperatures get hot, that that not is an always such an unusual thing. The difference was this bush burnt, but it didn't consume. It kept burning. And so he stopped to look at it. And when he stopped to look at it, he found out it was a talking bush. It started talking to him. And then he really was interested. And of course, we know from the Bible, that was the voice of God talking to him. And God is telling him that he's going to go back to Egypt 
And he is going to deliver the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. I wonder what went through Moses' mind. I wonder if Moses saw God. Don't you remember what I did? Don't you remember what I've done? Don't you remember how, how, how badly I failed? Don't you remember my hot temper? How, how angry I got? And God, God would say, Moses, I forgot all that, but I haven't forgotten you. And God knew exactly where he was, and God knew exactly where to find him. God didn't forget Moses. And I thought about Samson. Samson was a great man. I know, uh, you know, we, we only remember, sometimes we only remember the bad things about certain people in the Bible. When in reality, they did some great things. Samson was an amazing man. It, you know, in the Old Testament, they were not indwelt by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God came on men, and then He came off of men. Now in the New Testament, once you receive Christ as your Savior, the Spirit of God takes up residence inside of you. And, and you'll never le- lose the Holy Spirit. He's, your, he's our down payment on the, the, the finished product of salvation. God, He's the earnest, earnest money, as God would say, of our inheritance, okay? So you have the Holy Spirit. But in the Old Testament, He would come on folks for great exploits, and then He would leave them. Well, in, in the phrase in the Old Testament would be, the Spirit of the Lord came upon so-and-so. Did you know that phrase, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson? That, that phrase is used more of him than any other person in the Old Testament. He's an amazing fellow. And he did some amazing things. He was a great judge in Israel delivering them from the Philistines time and time again. We know his, his downfall with Delilah. And he got his hair cut in the devil's barber shop. And he made his mistake. And then the Philistines were on him and he had no more strength. And they, 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 they bound him and they took him in as a prisoner. And they, they shaved his head and they plucked out his eyes. And there he sits. Oh, from time to time, they'd bring him out to make fun of him. To poke fun at him. He'd be the center of attention. Oh, I imagine they might have had little boys or little girls come out and do things to him just to, just to make fun because he was weak like anybody else. And he was the laughing stock. And he could hear. Hey, his eyes were gone, his hair was gone, but his hearing was still there. And he'd hear everybody laughing at him. And they put him to work like an animal. He was grinding the, the, the meal. He would push the wheel around. And I, I don't know how it happened. The Bible doesn't say. All the Bible says is how be it, the hair of his head began to grow again. I don't know. He couldn't see. There wasn't a mirror to look in. But he just, you know, one day he must have reached up there and felt something. He said, whoa, wait a minute. Some of you men would love that experience, I know. <laughs> Sorry, Xavier. Like some, uh, what are you laughing at, Ron? Uh, <laughs> he says, wow. He says, hair's growing back. And I want you to look in the book of Judges, will you? Go to Judges 16 with me. Judges chapter 16. Put, a little, put your bookmark. That bookmark, beautiful bookmark you got this morning. You can put that right in Isaiah 49, all right? We'll come back there. Look with me at Judges 16. He knows his hair is growing back. The lad comes to get him to bring him out to the big arena where they're going to make fun of him again. The Bible says I make sport of him. Okay? And Samson decides I'm going to ask God to do something. Notice verse 27 of Judges 16. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. Here's what Samson did. Verse 28, He called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, what's the next two words, church? Remember me. He said, God, if you haven't forgotten me, I'm asking you, God, to remember me. Remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars 
upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Sam said, Lord, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord's and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. He brought the house down, didn't he? Huh? You know why? God didn't forget him. God still remembered Samson. He still remembered Moses. He still remembered Peter. Remember Peter who said, though everybody will forsake you, I never will. Oh, Peter, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And that night when Jesus is betrayed in the garden, and of course Peter, maybe uh, he, he, he thought he'd defend him, he takes out his sword and cuts a guy's ear off. I think he meant to split his head wide open, but he's not a soldier, he's a fisherman. And so he didn't have pretty good aim, and it just sliced the ear off. And you know, it's amazing. It always was amazing to me, just a little sidelight here, how Jesus picked that guy's ear up and put it right back on his head and healed it. If I'd have been in those other soldiers, I'd have said, <laughs> I don't want anything to do with this guy. I think I'll just back away. I, that'd have been, that'd, that'd, wouldn't that freak you out? I mean, that's crazy. Okay, back to the message. So, he cuts his ear off, and, and of course, you know, Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss. The soldiers take him away. All the disciples run. And Peter follows afar off, the Bible says. And when he gets to where the, Jesus goes into Pilate's judgment hall, there's an outer court area there, and it's a, it's a colder night, and they have the fires going. And these people are warming their hands around the fire, and Peter joins in. You know the story. He gets accused of being one of his followers, and he denies that he knows the Lord. He even begins to curse and swear to deny they know, that, that he knows him. And the third time he denied that he knew who Jesus was, the cock crew. And there's one account in the gospel where he looked in the judgment hall and Jesus was at a window and he looked out and looked right at Simon Peter and they made eye contact. And he could see, I've, I've no doubt, he could see the disappointment in the face of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says Peter went out and wept bitterly. He was, he was so disappointed in himself. You ever been disappointed in yourself? You ever been so disappointed at you, you, you let the Lord down by something you did or something you said that you just, you just start beating yourself up because you say, how could I have done that? How could I have said that? Don't you think Peter rehearsed those conversations in his head? Don't you think he a thousand times says, why did I do that? Why didn't I say this? How could I be so wrong? How could I be so dumb? And Peter I think believed he had completely failed as a disciple. I don't think he intended to ever continue to follow Jesus because I don't think he felt worthy to do it. But I want you to look in the book of Mark. Would you look in the Gospel of Mark, please? Mark chapter 16 is the resurrection of the Lord. And you know the story that the ladies come early in the morning to anoint the body for the the burial. They didn't do it on Saturday because that's the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath. And they're, they're talking about, remember they're talking about who's going to roll the stone away when we get there because it's so big. And they get there in verse number 3, here's their question, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? Mark 16 verse 4, when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled, was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples that he goeth before you into Galilee. Did I miss anything? Oh, I did. I missed something. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And of course they went out quickly and went back and told him. Can you think about this now? They go back. The disciples, as most of you know, 
were, were, were locked in an upper room. They had the door locked, the door shut. When Jesus shows up there later that night, he just came through, he just appeared in the room. Uh, he, didn't need a, he didn't need to go through the door. Amen? He just showed up. And, and, and But think about this. They come back and said, Man, He's not there. He's not there. He's alive. He's arisen from the dead. An angel told us that. And He told us to come back and tell the disciples and, and you, Peter. He said, Make sure you tell the disciples and Peter. Peter said, What? He, he said my name? No, wait a minute. Did He name the other disciples? No. He just said disciples, but He said, Tell the disciples and Peter. No. He, he meant... He meant he said my name? He really meant me? How do you think? How would that make you feel? Wow. He wanted me to know especially. He used my name. And, and he called him by name. I think Jesus was wanting Peter to know I haven't forgotten you. Though you're disappointed in yourself, and certainly you disappointed me, and, and, and you, you, you let your pride get the better of you, and you relied upon yourself, and you should have relied on me. But Peter, I haven't forgotten you. Boy, that was good. He didn't forget Moses. He's not going to forget you. He didn't forget uh, Elijah. He didn't, he's not going to forget you. He didn't forget Samson. He's not going to forget you. He didn't forget Peter. He's not going to forget you. Don't ever think, oh, God, just write me off. God's forgotten me. God's driven off and I left me in McDonald's. No, He hasn't. God knows where you are. He hasn't forgotten them and He won't forget you. Now, I want to give you the second thought. Why won't He forget you? Why won't He forget you? Isaiah 49 again. <clears throat> Look there, please, if you would. Isaiah 49, verse 16. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. God says, I won't forget you because I've graven you upon the palms of my hands. God says, I won't forget you because when I look at the hands, there's nail scars in the hands from where I died on the cross for you. That God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And every time the Lord Jesus looks at those hands and He sees those nail scars in His hands, He thinks about us. He thinks about you and He thinks about me. He doesn't forget us. Those nail prints remind Him that He bought us. The nail prints remind Him that though He was rich, yet for our sakes He became poor, that we through His poverty might be made rich. The nail prints remind him that we're redeemed by his blood. The nail prints remind him that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The nail prints remind him that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Those nail prints remind him that if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's why though you stray from him, he doesn't forget you. Though you go into sin, He doesn't forget you. That's why even though you're unfaithful to Him, He remains faithful to you. That's why though you forget Him, He'll never forget you. He'll never forget you. The, the, the nail-scarred hands tell Him He'll never forget you. Fanny Crosby, the blind hymn writer, when they ask her, you've never seen Jesus, and how will you know who Jesus is when you get to heaven? You've never, uh, it'll be the first time you'll be able to see anybody. She goes, oh, I'll know him. And she, she wrote the song, didn't she? I'll know him by the nail prints. Prints of the nails in his hands. That's how I'll know who Jesus is. <clears throat> He'll never forget thee because of the nail prints in his hands. And number two, he says, because thy walls are continually before me. The walls of Jerusalem now are in shambles. They've been completely destroyed. And God saw those. Did you know God sees the broken down walls of your life too? God sees the, the, the broken dreams. God sees the, the, the plans that have not been fulfilled. 
God sees the broken hopes, the unfulfilled expectations. God sees the broken relationships. And just as He had the walls of Jerusalem to get rebuilt, God can rebuild the walls of your life. God is, God is in the rebuilding business. And your walls are always before Him. He's interested in the details of our life. He rebuilt the walls of Moses' life, didn't He? He rebuilt the walls of David's life. He rebuilt the walls of Peter's life. And, and listen, uh, from the time he cursed and swore and denied he knew the Lord, hey, just within two months' time, he's preaching Pentecost. And 3,000 are putting their faith in Jesus Christ. And no doubt, in Jerusalem, where all these folks are gathered for the feast, no doubt there had to be people there who were there that night and heard him deny the Lord. But he rebuilt the walls for Peter. I'm saying God, God knows who you are. God knows where you are. And God has not forgotten you this morning. He knows exactly where you are. And if you're here today and you've never received him as your Savior, why don't you turn to him today? Why don't you realize those nail prints were for you? He died for your sin. He died in your place. You know, there's an old song we used to sing, a uh, little chorus, Do Lord. Remember, remember, Do Lord? Do Lord, oh, do Lord, oh, do you remember me? Do Lord, oh, do Lord, oh, do you remember me? Do Lord, oh, do Lord, oh, do you remember me? Way beyond the blue. Can I got news for you? He remembers you. He remembers you. That, that last, and by the way, that last verse was, I took Jesus as my Savior, you take Him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take Him too. We don't, we don't finish that stanza by way beyond the blue. We say, while He's calling you. If you wait till beyond the blue, you waited too late. <laughs> okay? You take Him while He's calling you. He never forgets you. There's a song. You know, I didn't look to see if it's in our book or not. Where's Bob? Is Arise My Soul Arise in our book, do you know? Arise my soul, arise. Shake off thy guilty fears. Okay, let me read it to you, can I? This is just the first verse, I think. Arise my soul, arise. Shake off thy guilty fears. Listen to what the songwriter wrote. The bleeding sacrifice on my behalf appears. This is the bleeding sacrifice in heaven that appears on our behalf. It's the Lord Jesus. Before the throne, my surety stands. Before the throne, my surety stands. My name is written on His hands. Isn't that a great song? I tell you what, I, I wouldn't trade the hymns of the faith for the modern stuff they have today for anything in the world. I wouldn't do it. Great doctrine in these hymns. My name is written on his hands. Yea, God says they may forget. God says I will never forget you. Take that this morning, will you? God will never forget you. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now this morning. Thank you for the attention of everyone today. Lord, thank you for this wonderful truth that you've given to us in the book of Isaiah. Oh, your people got discouraged and they, they got to thinking that you'd forgotten about them. And Lord, I don't know everybody in the room and I don't know what everybody is going through or what, what kind of trials or troubles or difficulties they're having. But there may be somebody here this morning who feels that God's forgotten them. And I pray that today they've been reminded there's a God in heaven who loves them, who died for them, who has their names engraven on the palms of his hands, the nail prints, because he died for them. You so loved us, and you still love us. You want to rebuild our lives for your honor and for your glory. And I pray, Lord, they bow the knee today and say, God, I realize you haven't forgotten me. Thank you for working in my life. 
Lord, help folks today, encourage people today, strengthen people today that our God will never forget us. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. We'll have your invitation. I wonder how many folks here today would say, Preacher, I realize those nail prints that Jesus has in His hands, that those were for me. There's a day in my life when I realized that Christ died for me, that He took my place on the cross and He died for my sins. And there was a day, Pastor, when from my heart I believed in Christ as my Savior and I asked Him to be my Savior and I'm trusting Christ alone to take me to heaven this morning. And Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony that I'm trusting Jesus alone to give me eternal life. Would you put your hand up this morning and say, that's my case? All right, you may put them down. So somebody here today would say, Pastor, I don't know that I've ever personally put my faith and trust in Jesus as my Savior. Pastor, I, I appreciate you praying for me about that. I'll not embarrass you or call you out, but I will pray for you. And I wonder if you slip your hand up and put it back down and say, Pastor, pray for me this morning. I'm not sure that if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure that I have eternal life. Please pray for me. All right. The message today was to believers. And I wonder if there are any believers here this morning would just say, Pastor, you know, God spoke to my heart this morning. Oh, maybe you just felt you've been, been feeling kind of lonely. Maybe you feel like nobody cares. Maybe you feel like you've been forgotten. But maybe this morning the Spirit of God just put His arms around you and said, I haven't forgotten you. I know, I know where you are. You're, you're, the nail prints remind me. Your walls are ever before me. I see your life. And God is not going to forget you. He's, he's at work in each one of our lives. He that's begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. But I wonder how many believers just say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart this morning. Please pray for me today. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Oh, that's good. Amen. 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 You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to Him today. If you're here today and you've never received Christ, come. We'll have someone take a Bible, show you how you can know you're on your way to heaven. If you're saved and never been scripturally baptized, come and say, you know, I want to obey the Lord in baptism. Maybe you're saved and you're scripturally baptized and <clears throat> you believe this is where you ought to belong. Then you come and say, you know what? We want to be a member of Bible Baptist Church. If you just need to come and pray, Christian, and bow your knee to the Lord and spend some time with Him before you go home. That's what the invitation's for this morning. Father, bless this invitation now. I thank you for speaking to hearts today. And I pray, Lord, that you'll have your way in each heart and life these next few moments. That each individual will do what you're bidding them to do in their heart. Meet with us, Lord. Assure each and every one that you will never forget us. We love you, Lord. Be with these decisions now made during this invitation time, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing the invitation hymn. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him today, will you please? Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? That's right. No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior And life more abundant and free Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Over us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. 
when the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace his word shall not fail you he promised believe him and all will be well then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation to tell turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace father we thank you for this morning now thank you lord for the for the wonderful scripture yea they may forget but i will never forget thee lord we love you thank you so much for loving us and father i pray you'll give us a good afternoon now dismiss us with your care uh prepare our hearts for what you have for us this evening when we come back for the evening service it's in Christ's name that we ask it. Amen. Amen. Let's sing the joy of the Lord is my strength. That will be our closing song, Brother Bob. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. That's great. You're dismissed. We'll see you tonight.